Hello and welcome again to the Hobo and his Girlfriend Wrestling Podcast. My name is Hobo Tom. My girlfriend, I think, went to go get her new car today. Or at least new to her. And you're watching the Hobo and his Girlfriend Wrestling po- <coughs> Wrestling Show. Again, just a couple of quick news and notes. Um, I have been having I have been having issues with Spectrum. Bad Spectrum. Again, so I think next week all my videos are going to be kind of one day behind. I just have the internet to watch. Because I realized that the internet's free. Cable is not. So. So I do apologize for that. So kind of my podcasts are going to be either a few hours behind or a day behind. And today was a weird day. I had to open at work, I'm home, just took a nap. Naps are good. And I'm making this video, and hopefully in a few hours I'll be able to post it. And I'll have to do some editing. But again, welcome to the show. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Share as well. Leave, give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Give me either. It's always nice to know why. Also, feel free to email at hoboandgirlfriend at gmail.com. And let's talk some SmackDown. Oh, wait, before that, even better, let's talk some NXT. You're going to see this guy, Hobo Tom, in Daytona Beach at the Multicultural Center on September the 7th. Or is it the 6th? No, the 7th. You'll see me September. You'll see me September the seventh at the Multicultural Center for NXT, NXT, NXT. Well, that should be good. Um, NXT always puts on a good, good couple of shows. Also on Saturday, the first, I'm gonna see if I can somehow do a live stream for Sold Out. So I just watched highlights of Triple Mania. Which is something I do have to put on my calendar. Wow. If you don't see bad wrestling that just puts a smile on your face. Wrestling, the wrestling itself was terrible. I mean, you could literally hear Brian Cage shouting at the other wrestlers. Why aren't you talking to me? I think so many technical issues. It was just a train wreck. Sometimes train wrecks are bad. Wrestling train wrecks tend to be good, though. Again, good for the wrong reasons. They have ref spots, ref versus ref in like a woman's match. Women getting busted open. People getting busted open. People tearing off masks when they shouldn't. Production crew lighting tables on fire. Ref holding ladder for wrestlers. Wrestlers holding ladders for wrestlers. Wrestlers are going to take the pump holding the, the ladder. Just... Wrestlers hanging from the ceiling. It was just so bad. It, it, you just have to laugh at the absurdity of it. But let's talk to, about some quality wrestling. Let's talk about SmackDown. SmackDown was fun. I mean, like every show, it has its high points. It has its low points. But again, SmackDown at least is a very consistent product. And it's entertaining. It's fun. You start off with a New Day coming down. Again, you have a New Day celebration. And because they are five-time, five-time, five-time tag team champions of the world. You had the original five-time, five-time, five-time champion, heavyweight champion of the world. King Booker! It's funny. He, I think they're going to tease a, a split. Because Biggie wasn't with the whole program. Um, again, the, Booker T can still do a spinner rooney, which is great. And I think I met Booker T once by accident at a gym because he was working out at a gym out in Kalamazoo. I guess there was a show in probably Grand Rapids. And he was there at the gym working out. And honestly, the only reason I knew him is because he got up and did his little boxer shuffle. 
And I'm like, that's Booker T. So, again, it was fun. I mean, he kind of just went through his workout routine. I, I think he kind of knew that I knew who he was and just said, it's Booker T. Hey, man, it's great to meet you. He's like, oh, thanks. It, it, was his, it was his time on his dime. He doesn't have to acknowledge me. He did so. Thank you very much, Booker T. I do appreciate that. But again, he did the spoon, spinner rooney. Biggie cannot do the spinny rooney. And this is a hobo rooney. Whoa! There we go. Gotta add that in. There we go. Mic's back on. But again, it was really fun though. And this started, this again led to the first match of the night, which actually was a surprise match. It, I knew it was the bar versus the club, but then the clones got involved. Well, I haven't seen the clones in a while. Like, when did they get back? I mean, the New Day was on commentary. New Day have a future in commentary, though. They're darn good at it. Oh, I still think about the plastic thing back there. I have to, I have to make some pictures. At least post them on the bathroom door or something. That was a really fun match. I mean, Cesaro is great. The clones were actually really good in this, even though I don't know why they were there. I mean, initially I was going to give it a cheeseburger because I saw the clones and I'm like. But they were good, though. They played the role. I mean, my only qualm, and and again, it comes to the booking decisions. I mean, the clones are, are really good in this match. I mean, they, they play up the, the uninvited tag team really good, making in sneaky tags. I mean, the double teams they do are great. But I don't know why they, I mean, if you're going to have the... Bar, 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 bar. Go over. I mean, why do it at the, the expense of the club? Again, because I am Bullet Club for life. I mean, why do it at the expense of the club? Just have Caesar and uh, Seamus and Cesaro pin one of the clones. Would have worked better. Again, what do I know? I go collecting aluminum. Ooh, I have to go get that one piece I found, too. Add to my collection! Yes! Then we have a Jeff Hardy promo. And then he has RKO paint on his face. Um, and then Randy Orton comes out, and Randy Orton came out to delete chant. This is good. She's put back, is back there who is better. But the only problem with this is that the, Jeff Hardy's getting his wish. And I think we're going to hear a lot of these chants. Please don't die. Please don't die. Please don't die. Because it's going to be Jeff Hardy and Randy Orton in Hell in a Cell. In a Hell in a Cell match. I think there's going to be a, a lot more Hell in a Cell matches. I want to say it's going to be AJ and Samoa Joe. Braun Strowman and Roman Reigns. Jeff Hardy and Randy Orton. They would need someone else from Raw to even it out. Don't know who that would be off the top of my head. And so that's that would be f potentially four matches. Three for sure. Bye, cheese but. So, this is going to be an interesting pay-per-view, and it's coming up again in three weeks. So, it's coming up really quick for some reason. Again, at all in, I'm going to show you how I make my Chicago-style pizza with sausage. So, again, that's going to be a little bonus video. Probably I'll put that on when I do my NXT video. That or my Lucha Underground. Again, it'll be sometime in about two weeks. You'll see how I make my Chicago style pizza. You know, it was, it, was a, it was a good promo. It serves its purpose. 
then there was a Carmella promo backstage. And, and our, our truth is just like stalking Carmella. It's just weird. It's like, our truth, you're not going to wrestle Carmella. Although, if WWE did it right, that could be a fun comedy popcorn match. Ooh, that could be. Problem is, will the WWE do that right? They could. I mean, Lucha Underground has on intergender matches all the time. Um, AAA is just a hot mess. I forget if Impact does intergender matches. What the promotion used to? Well, well, Pete, well, pro, pro wrestling gorilla Shikara. I don't think Ring of Honor does either. We'll see. Um, then this led to a match of Naomi. Oh, Naomi, Naomi and Billy Kay. But before that. I almost forgot to mention that there was a promo with Rusev Day, a fully reunited, and on the same track, Rusev Day, with Aiden English, Rusev, and Lana. And another match, I don't know if it's going to be on the pre-show or not, is going to be Rusev Day, which is going to be consist of Rusev, Aiden English, and Lana, versus Naomi and Jimmy and Jay Uso. So that should be fun. That's probably going to be on a pre-show, I think. So Naomi came out. Came out um, she took on Billy Kay of the Iconics. And it was a good match. It was a good match. It wasn't anything special. It was a ham sandwich match. I mean, Billy Kay's just a good talker. Naomi's good. Of course, that was a little interference, baby. Peyton Royce kicked Naomi in the head, which led to the pin by Billy Kay. So Naomi's lost to both Billy Kay and Peyton Royce. And I think this is going to lead to a women's tag team showdown. It's not going to be Charlotte Becky unless they do something funky. Like Harriet face and a heel together. It's probably going to be the boss and hug connection with Bailey and Sasha, but the Iconics might get involved. And then you might have the right squad. So we'll see. They could do a lot with that. Again, if I was to book it, probably have the right squad win. And then have them feud with the boss and the hugs. Lose it on Raw, but then at the next pay-per-view, have the boss and the hugs drop it to the Iconics. Although there are no women tag teams besides the Iconics on SmackDown, so there would have to be a call up or Nikki Cross is just partnered with some random person. Hey, stranger things have happened. And that's my booking. Again, Kay is a good talker. Again, very good in the ring. Naomi's good in the ring. It, it just didn't it just had that ham sandwich feel. It was good. I have no qualms about it. Let's go on to the Bree and Daniel Bryan promo. Daniel Bryan runs on the Miz. And then El Igolo, Los Sombra, shows up. It was Andrade Cien Amis and Selena Vega. And oh my God, is Selena Vega short. I couldn't believe it. She looks taller. In some promos, she has to be standing on a crate. Or Andrade Almas is like bent at the knees or something. Because wow, she's tiny. And this led to a Daniel Bryan versus Andrade Cien Almas match, which by the way was incredible. 
I mean, it was it had the feelings of a squash match with Daniel Bryan getting in kind of more of a high impact offense. But Andrade Cien Almas, again, you cannot tranquilo against Daniel Bryan. He learned that the tough way. But again, he got all his spots in. There was a flow to it. It was smooth. It was really good. I mean, it was a surf and surf match. I mean, if they did this in New Japan Pro Wrestling, oh, wow. Or even if this was a pay-per-view, I think if this match, it was a decent length. If it was a little bit longer, it would have been better. Actually, you know, yeah, it's surf and surf. And mainly because, baby, we had a death to finish, baby. Nobody wins. Because the Miz got involved. Um, the Miz had Daniel Bryan. He jumped Daniel Bryan at, after Daniel Bryan kind of launched himself at him. Um, the Miz got involved, started to punch Daniel Bryan in the face. Bree tried to run to her man's aid. Maurice threw her into the ring post. So, so at least this way, Bree's taking her bumps. I, don't, I think Maurice's child was the most recent. She won't probably be taking that many hard bumps, at least. Um, I know they mentioned on... Oh, shoot, I missed that, too. Fudge. But I know on Ms. and Mrs. they mentioned how she had back surgery. I think that led to complications with her pregnancy. So I don't think she's going to take too many hard bumps. But, well, that's why the Miz is there. But, and then, again, Selena Vega got involved. El Eagle, Andrade Almas got involved. And it was just a fun beatdown. And then Maurice held Brie by the hair. So she could watch Daniel Bryan be stuck in the the yes lock, the STF, the, the, the arm with the crossface, and then Selena Vega delivered the double knees to Bree, and it was good though. It was, it was it was really fun. Again, it was a great technical wrestling match and sets up a good story. So I mean, even after Daniel Bryan and the Miz. I mean, you can still have story. There's some there's some intertwining there. So again, you can say, "Hey, Miz, I helped you. Help me out. Give me a title shot when you get that title. Title shot." And again, it should be fun. Again, at least it's so something for the future. And Daniel Bryan was getting dropped on his head a lot, and not so much because of what Andrade Helms said, but the way he did. He did a super tiger plex from the top rope, and he just like bounce. You could just watch his head bounce off the mat. I mean, Andrade Almas did do what he could do to protect his head, or protect Daniel Bryan. Said Daniel Bryan has to protect himself a little bit more. I mean, he's not gonna pass impact tests or whatever else they do. You know, I mean, AJ Styles and Samoa Joe, oh, those two are going to be so good. It's, it's going to be fun. Then you have the main event of the evening. And it's for the SmackDown Women's Championship. In this corner, the challenger. Weighing in at whatever. Carmella. Who, by the way, looks better in a two-piece. Versus the champion. She is the daughter of the Nature Boy. She is the queen of SmackDown. She is Charlotte Blair. And I, f I think this was a match to have a title, so the title wasn't necessarily on the line. The only thing, Charlotte Flair just can't wear skin tone trunks. It's not that flattering. Carmella looked great in her two piece, though. Again, things I can say with a white girlfriend present. Bad hobo! And I do miss my, my sweetie a lot. I'll probably see her, I think, on Labor Day. Again, that's going to set things again behind a little bit. 
Well, I hope in Tuesday. Again, it was a good match. Carmella's improving by leaps and bounds. I mean, she's improving amazingly. She did it like a, a dive onto the floor. Just shove, flare off. Carmella's getting good. She's getting her ring savvy about her. She's getting her ring generalship about her. I'm sure being in the ring with Charlotte Flair helps out immensely. But, I mean, it was just good. And Carmella lost. She tapped out. Eventually, Charlotte got into the figure eight after eating a whole bunch of kicks. I think there was even a top row Frankensteiner by Carmella on, on Charlotte, which was, amazing, which was really amazing. I mean, besides the dive, just the, again, Carmella's just improving so much. So, Flair won again in the figure eight. Carmella tapped out. She's not getting a title match. Or maybe this was her title match. Her rematch. Whatever. But then, heel back, heel and showed up. And again, this was, this was a good match. This was a really good cheeseburger. This was a surf and surf match. Because heel Becky showed up. Heel Becky is hot. She's so good as a heel. Why wasn't she heel before? Face Becky is cute. Heel Becky, hot. And again, because Becky Lynch got involved and it was a good match, this was a surf and turf match. Again, for the most part, a really good, very entertaining show. Again, I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Oh, wow, this is 20 minutes long. I did not know that. Again, thank you, everyone, for watching. My name is Hobo Tom. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. Again, sometime in two weeks, look forward to my NXT wrestling video. I'm still going to have my weekly recaps. It's just going to be kind of a day behind. The way I used to do it. Or uh, I'll see. It all depends what, what I can do. Eventually, we are going to get my girlfriend back on the show. Less hobo, no girlfriend, more thumbs up. Again, like, share, comment, subscribe. Also, feel free to leave an email at hoboandgirlfriend at gmail.com. Thanks, everyone. Bye. How do I turn? Oh, I don't need my girlfriend for this. So, learn how to.